It is another Wednesday evening, and I hope you're being careful in traffic. If you are indeed driving home, I am Pixelated Twix, your favorite nighttime DJ, and you're listening to In The Booth. Welcome to track two. I just wanted to stop and thank those of you who listened in last time. I truly appreciate all the support. This is me trying new things, and I have to say that I'm enjoying my self-awareness and nervousness and just me all around just stepping out. That being said, there is a lot to unpack tonight, as the cool kids say, so let's get right into it. I would like to preface this before we begin, just to let you know I realize that this is a daily and a dollar short. This was controversy that was covered uh, a few weeks ago, but I definitely wanted to still discuss it because I feel like it's still pertinent in uh, for the gaming industry as a whole because it just shows you the state of the gaming industry. Now, I wanted to talk to you about this Super Zoo story. It is a pixelated RPG with the premise of building and operating your own zoo. Now, the husband and wife duo working on this IP are, quote, heavily inspired, unquote, by Concerned Apes, Stardew Valley, and Marvelous Interactive's Harvest Moon series, known today as Story of Seasons. Now, that's something I would love to talk about later, not today, but definitely would like to cover that. Now, just at a glance, uh, Super Zoo Story has piqued my interest. Now, who doesn't want to run a zoo? I mean, that just speaks to my inner eight-year-old dreams of buying Brookfield Zoo and playing with the giraffes, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. However, there is a bit of controversy about this yet-to-be-released IP. Now, allegedly, assets from the beloved Stardew Valley were more than just muses for this couple, but parts of the game looked like they were simply copied and pasted with some tweaking here and there. Gamerant's May 8, 2021 article by Ramon Hara states, concept-wise, it appears that Super Zoo Story and Stardew Valley are different games. The former is set to focus on running a zoo in an open-world setting, while the latter is a farming simulator game that also features mining, some combat, and a romance mechanic. However, despite these two games focusing on different things, may notice how the overall aesthetic of Super Zoo Story is vividly similar to that of Stardew Valley. Looking at the pictures comparing the two games above and below, most players won't probably be able to tell both games apart. Based on the images released for Super Zoo Story so far, it is obvious that the game's textures, assets, characters, and environment models are all too similar to that of Stardew Valley's. Shortly after the issue sparked outrage on the internet, Stardew Valley creator Eric Barone shared his thoughts on Twitter, saying it's very confusing to people because it does look so similar that it could be mistaken for my work. Now, of course, Twitter speaks often and speaks loudly when it comes to controversy. 
Alex on Twitter says that not only is this a ripoff of Stardew Valley, they've also ripped off this church from Graveyard Keeper. Now that was my initial thought when I saw the screen grab. I have not played Graveyard Keeper, but I've certainly seen enough of the game to agree. Now this would have been a non-issue had Zoo Story simply just been a modded expansion. We've all seen the Stardew Valley expanded mod by Flash Shifter, which is amazing by the way. It, it adds new content, locations, events, and even the NPCs have their own well-written story arcs. But Sherlock Twitter continues to add to the accusation saying that allegedly other mod authors work were used in Zoo Story. So I will make sure to link all that information below for your viewing pleasure. Again, I wanna stress, if this were just a mod, this would have been a completely, a completely different conversation. The team would have been applauded for the work on adding more content to an already wonderful game. After all, who doesn't like extended storylines and more characters for their favorite RPGs? Modders have been saving the lives of many games since, I mean, well, since. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that it is difficult for me to replay a Bethesda game without adding mods. Even the current iteration of The Sims, I have several gigs or had several gigs worth of custom content and mods just so I can enjoy gameplay that I felt The Sims was missing. Which leads me to my second topic, the state of video games today, which we will talk about in detail after. Welcome to Side B. That was Easy Love by Alexi Blue. Um, if you're interested in any of the music I play, I will make sure I link all the goodies in the description box below. There will be a lot of information down there and I will try to keep it as organized as I possibly can. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. With E3 just around the corner, June 12th, I think, through the 15th, what reveals are you looking forward to? Me, personally, I'm excited about Bethesda Starfield. There's been a lot, a lot of hype around this game. Um, it is their new sci-fi er, uh, RPG, and honestly, I am here for it. I've been looking forward to new content from Bethesda since Fallout 76. And that being said, there, of course, is a little bit of controversy about the release with Microsoft's multi-billion dollar acquisition. There is confirmation of a Xbox and PC version of Starfield, but only where Game Pass exists. So basically, if you're not on PC or not on Xbox, you will not be able to play Starfield. This will also include any of the new IPs that Bethesda turns out in the future, I believe. It's very possible that existing games like Fallout 
and Skyrim will be available. I don't know for sure. Still, there's, you know, questions behind that. But as far as I know, um, the confirmation is if there's no Game Pass, there's no Bethesda access. Now, I spend 95% of my gaming hours on she my gaming rig. So this shouldn't exactly concern me, but it does. In my humble opinion, and I stress that, exclusives have been a bane to gamers for a long time and it shouldn't even exist. Consumers should be able to pick and choose what platform they want to play on and not be locked out of enjoying the content that is available or will be available. Of course, this will probably never happen because the bottom line always comes first with these companies and they're not charities, right? But I realize there's also hardware limitations to consider. The Switch isn't going to actually exactly be the best choice for a beefy game like Cyberpunk or Elite Dangerous. And there's the audience that Nintendo caters to. Some would say the more casual gamer, but I tend to disagree. And let's just be honest here as well. Japanese developer will release its beloved Mario and Zelda series when Microsoft convinces EA to emancipate Bioware or Maxis, and that ain't gonna happen. However, and a big however here, Xbox, PC, and PlayStation, they should have an open library for gamers to pick and choose, like I said before, or Consider this, maybe Sony should step up their game and release more exclusive content on other platforms such as PC Master Race. Even the time-gated content would be acceptable. It worked for Horizon Zero Dawn. The PC port brought a whole new audience to discover Aloy's story. I highly enjoyed that game. And with the sequel Forbidden West on the horizon, pun intended, it makes me wonder if the publisher will continue to be so generous in the future. I'm hoping so. And I would love to see God of War being on the list of um, available games on Steam. Besides, of all this other controversy, lately just some of these AAA studios have been failing and doing it in such epic ways. And I think this one might give them a boost. CD Projekt Red, for example, bit off more than they could chew with a rushed release to make a deadline for Cyberpunk, and now they've spent several months patching major bugs on a game that barely ran on new hardware. And honestly, I hate to reopen that wound, but we were all counting on CDR, CDPR, <laughs> it's a mouthful, to resuscitate and renew our dying hopes in the industry. And gamers have been extremely vocal about shelling out $60 for incomplete buggy games just to turn around and purchase DLC season passes and pricey microtransactions. We're tired of it. And Blizzard is high in the list of companies who have prioritized quantity over quality, money over content with its popular MMO War, World of Warcraft, now catering to the casual single player and just outright lack of compelling content. I've actually unsubbed and I feel like I've unsubbed for the very last time. And the result has been a massive exodus of staff and players alike. Of course, the situation with Activision and Blizzard, Activision Blizzard is more complicated than just simply a few pixels and some gameplay. There's a lot going on behind closed doors. I don't necessarily know what it is, so I'm not gonna get into that. But these are just a few reasons why our indie prod games are drawing a large audience. Price point, creativity, listening to co co uh, community feedback, gameplay, period. I could go on, but I won't. Um, anyways, I didn't mean to go on this long rant, but this was just my feelings and how, uh, how the state of gaming industry just looks to me and others so let me know what you think do you agree or disagree with me um i'd really love to hear your own personal thoughts please talk to me in the comments i want to hear what you've got to say but before i go i'd like to thank miss Britt for the research um miss Britt gaming by the way if you're in into first looks at wholesome games head over to her channel and subscribe and if you're into minecraft especially modded minecraft cosmic mermaid is currently featuring the roguelike dungeons mod pack 
so i will make sure to link both of their channels below i am uh also playing through mass effect legendary edition so stop by and hang out with me for a little while all right guys that is all i have for you today i hope you enjoyed this episode um anyways i will see you guys probably in another month at least for the podcast anyways all right until next time i've been pixelated twix ciao